Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tyler McNabb, and this is my YFZ450R. So, as you can see, we've got her uh, all cleaned up from the last race, um, which was round number eight of the Extreme XC series. And if you guys remember, in from that um, race, I had some issues. So, first thing that came up was on lap five, I was riding it and it kept dying on me. And my first thought was, I, I noticed it when I was going into corners locking up the brakes. And so my first thought, oh, my clutch is out of adjustment. I just need to adjust the clutch a little bit and maybe that'll fix it. Well, before I, I could even do that, just any time I would let off the throttle, it would die. So it wasn't even locking up the brakes or anything. It was just literally, if I would let off the throttle, the quad would die. And so that, once that happened, I pretty much knew exactly what it was. I'm hoping I know exactly what it is. And so usually what the issue is with that is what is known as the IAC or the idle air control valve. And so if we go under here, look up in here. So here's the throttle body, it's right in here. This is your TPM, um, TPS sensor, so your throttle position sensor. Um, that is right here. If you go just below that, you will see this little black valve right here and so what this is is this is that IAC valve so it is electronically controlled and what it does is it essentially works like a choke on a carburetor so um, you I assume a lot of you guys know like if your car is fuel injected which is most cars on the roads these days if you go out and you start your car that car idles up really high and then as it warms up it goes down well that is exactly what the IAC valve does on these YFZ450Rs. So it controls the idle. So when you start these things up, they idle really high while they warm up, and then they slowly drop down uh, once they warm up to a normal idle. The bad thing about that is these IAC valves are known for going bad. And so I'm pretty sure that's what happened to mine, um, which um, it just went bad so it wouldn't idle. And so what happens with that is unless you have a spare throttle body sitting around with one of those on it, there's nothing you can do about it because Yamaha doesn't sell that part separate from the throttle body. You'd have to buy a whole entire throttle body for it uh, to replace that, which is insanely expensive and not going to happen. So what the ATV industry has done is they've made a workaround for it. So what we have here, this is a manual idle valve adjuster, I guess you could call it. Manual idle adjuster, I think is usually what they call them. This one I got from Snur Interlocking or P4Quads.com. They make all kinds of little gadgets. I've actually got a set of Snur Interlocking um, uh, head studs on the 400EX. They're oversized head studs for uh, keeping, uh, keeping you from blowing head gaskets. So. I have a set of those on the 400 and then they just so happen to make uh, one of these manual idle adjusters. So there's a couple other companies that make them but they've been back ordered for quite a while. A lot of you, if you've seen them before, usually they come with like a uh, black anodized body and then like a yellow choke knob off of a Honda and that's what they are. However, those things have been back ordered forever and so what um, this guy did, I think Jeff is his name, the owner of it, Jeff Snur, is he went ahead and he made these custom little knobs probably on a mill in a lathe and uh, so that way he could still sell them and uh, because they've been back ordered for so long and people have been looking for them. So that's what we have today. We are going to try to get that thing installed and get this thing. Hopefully that was my issue and uh, we can get that resolved. The other thing we're going to be addressing in this video is the old radiator. So I need to take the radiator off, get it cleaned up because as you also know um, from that video is I overheated as well after I was having all the idle issues. So, radiator still got packed full of mud, even with these fins. So I think what we're gonna do is, um, unfortunately I don't think I can fit a furnace filter in between the fins and the frame. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is maybe taking those fins off and then putting 
a furnace filter in there so if you guys aren't aware what a lot of people do is you take um, it's like a cheap furnace filter material I'll have to go grab it here in a second it's out in the camper right now but um, it's this really cheap and very it's not like it's not super fine particulate type uh, furnace filter it's very open and so it'll keep the big debris the mud and that kind of stuff out of your radiator however it'll still let it flow enough to where the fan can pull air through so what I think I'm gonna do is get a, um, get that out of the camper cut that up and try to slide it in there and see what that does because that's what a lot of guys do and the nice thing about that is you don't even have to attach it it just slides in between the frame and the radiator in here and then what you do is if you have a muddy race or just most races is you slide that in there and then let's say it gets clogged up well those filters are really cheap and if you buy one of the big pieces of it for like 10 bucks or something you can cut like three of them out of it and so what happens is if that thing gets clogged during the race you start to overheat you reach down you grab it you pull it out you throw it off the side of the track and uh, now you've got a fresh clean radiator for the rest of the race so I think that's what I may end up doing that's what a lot of the pros do that's what a lot of other guys do so I figured I might as well give that a try since the old fins did not uh, did not work like I thought it would or did not work exactly how I thought it would so anyway I've talked for almost seven minutes at this point so what we will do now is we will go ahead we will jump right into the video and get this thing rolling Okay guys, well we got it installed over here on the quad as you can see. So basically how it works is uh, to adjust the idle, you turn it in or out. So I've got it set at about half right now. So if I turn it left, that'll bring it out so the idle should increase. And if I turn it to the right, it go in and the idle should decrease, I believe. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, take it over in the other side and uh, get it fired up. But I also wanted to show you real quick, I went ahead, I plugged off uh, where it um, plugs into the harness just to kind of keep some dirt out of it. Unfortunately, the only color of the silicone plug that I had that would fit is pink, so eh, I guess it is what it is, but it'll be tucked away. So we got our air filter on real quick. Uh, yeah, I know it's a little bit dirty, but that's just the one I had laying around. So uh, we got that on. We got this installed, so I'm gonna take it over in the other side of the garage real quick, get her fired up, and uh, see if we can dial that idle in. So let's get over there. Okay guys, let's get it fired up.
we go, guys. She idles, so I think I got it dialed in pretty good. Maybe a tad low, but I would prefer to idle a tad low than be idling really high, so I can always play with it a little bit uh, later, but we should be good there. So next thing to do is to uh, let's go ahead and tear into this radiator. Okay guys, while I was waiting for the um, radiator cool down after running it, I went ahead and I was actually able to go ahead and stuff this furnace filter in there. I didn't think I would necessarily be able to with the fins and stuff, but I was actually able to get it in there. And since it is kind of tight in there, it's actually holding in pretty good. The only thing I may do is to kind of pull this back and make sure it's kind of secure is I may stick like a tiny zip tie through the corner of this to where it's barely holding on and um, uh, drill a hole through the, uh, the guard here and just kind of barely zip tie it into the corner so that way I can still just rip it off real quick if I need to but it also kind of holds it uh, secure back in there so that way it doesn't end up like falling forward or something like that and then I kind of down here on the bottom I tucked it behind that bolt there so I may just end up doing that for now and not taking the fins off because I kind of like to keep the fins on there for when it's like a dusty race or something um, but I still want to somewhat protect the radiator I guess but you never know if there's going to be mud in the track it seems like because the first round where I overheated it was pretty dusty that race and the woods was like the woods wasn't dusty I guess um, but it didn't actually seem muddy and then it ended up being insanely muddy so um, you just never know at a race so what I'd like to do is I'd like to leave the fins on um, so that way even when I do rip the furnace filter out it will still have a, somewhat of a, a little bit of protection just to make sure I can last as long as I possibly can so at this point I've done basically everything I can to keep this thing from possibly overheating um, something I do want to do eventually is get a uh, one of the raccoon racing products um, triple pass radiators from BNR Motorsports but the bad thing is is that gives me a bigger radiator for better cooling but just because I have a bigger radiator if it's packed with mud it's still not going to be cooling so first thing I got to do is make sure I'm keeping mud out of the radiator so hopefully this is about as much as you can do other than I know I think it's LS4 fibers makes some actual mud guards that kind of they it goes through here and kind of pops out like this but I'm I mean I know they work but I'm not a huge fan of them because I mean at that point it's just a solid material it's kind of like this carbon fiber piece but there's no slots in them and so it's just a solid piece going right through here and then right through here um, basically where the furnace filter is and so I'm not really a fan of that it should pull air from underneath but you're really cutting off airflow so I don't know um, worst comes to worst if it's a really muddy race I'll probably end up taping that up that's what a lot of people do is you run some tape from this guard to up here on the front of the frame and essentially kind of box it off to where air can only come from underneath but that's just like a worst case scenario so anyway I will quit talking at this point we're gonna get the radiator out get it cleaned out and uh, get this thing back in and I want to go for a test ride so let's get to it
Okay guys, well, we got the radiator all cleaned up and installed back in, and this thing is ready to go for either the next ride or race. Uh, don't have another race for a little bit, so um, probably do, hopefully I'll do a little bit of riding around the house, but uh, yeah, uh, as you guys saw, or what you may have noticed is I did go ahead and uh, take the um, overflow tank out. A lot of people have told me that um, you don't need it and a lot of people don't run it um, but it's it's kind of personal preference I ran it for a while just to make sure um, because me being the skeptic I am I didn't want to run out of coolant and um, you know possibly blow the engine up but uh, so even when it has overheated it hasn't like pushed a bunch of coolant out so um, with this um, bigger or not bigger but higher pressure radiator cap I think I'm actually good to go because even when it does overheat it's not like sho it wasn't shoving a bunch of uh, coolant into the overflow tank and then the overflow tank overflowing as well so I uh, decided to just go ahead take the coolant the overflow tank off and uh, I'm just gonna run the higher pressure radiator cap just kind of clean up the uh, area a little bit make it a little bit easier to get the radiator in and out and uh, just kind of clean up the quad a little bit as well. So we got that. I'm gonna go through and um, drill some holes in these at some point to uh, attach that furnace filter material to, and then uh, this thing should be ready to go. So uh, you saw there just at the end, I threw in some footage of um, the uh, cold start with the idle adjusted properly, the manual idle adjuster uh, adjusted properly. So once I got it adjusted uh, last night, um, it was warm and so I wanted to see how it started with a good idle um, cold because I didn't know if it would maybe not wanna start. Granted, it's like probably 80 some degrees today so it's not a great, um, a great uh, example of a cold start but we'll see uh, once we hit fall and uh, start to get into winter uh, how this thing wants to start I'm guessing it may not want to start quite as easy since it doesn't have that electronic valve um, but uh, we'll do uh, we'll do what we can with it where did I set that yeah here it is so if you guys didn't if I didn't show it to you here's what it looks like so this is the part that screws into the throttle body. This is what it looks like from the outside, and then this is what it looks like on the inside. So as you can see, just a little spring. There's a motor inside there that moves this guy in and out, and that's the same exact thing that happens when I twist the, um, the adjustment knob. So the uh, piece moves in and out inside the throttle body there, therefore adjusting the idle. So instead of it just being electronic, now it's manual. So but I don't have to worry about it failing and I don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a new throttle body just to get a new ISC valve. So um, overall just works out pretty good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here. Hopefully we are going to be good on the quad and stop from overheating because I am sick of, you know, this last race it worked out that I, you know, I still got first in class even though I overheated. However, my totally killed my overall. And if you guys don't remember, you didn't see that race vlog, I was running really good in the overall. And I thought that day could have possibly been my podium day. So, you know what, at this point, I can't worry about it anymore because it's done and gone. But um, hopefully from here on out, we have fixed that issue and I will not have any more issues with overheating crossing my fingers. So. Thank you guys for coming and watching. I really do appreciate it. I've talked a lot in this video, so hopefully you guys didn't get too bored. But anyway, thank you guys for coming and watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one.